So it's Susanna here from The Good Property Company. Right guys, I hope you are enjoying. I'm doing a series of videos, professionally shot, how good is that for you guys, on all the deals that we've done and talking through how we got them so you can look at deal sourcing, what we did with them so you can figure out yourselves how you might monetize your deals and also all the things went wrong and what we did about it. Right, so far you've probably seen, uh, I've talked about my first seven deals. Those were the first seven deals that I did when I was uh, working full time kitchen table startup. I took 60 grand out my mortgage. I only raised money because of circumstances like I wanted to go faster and mortgage companies wouldn't give me any money because they said yes we'll give it to you but it's 100% retention explained in another video. So I'd started to learn how to deal source. I'd built a portfolio and I jumped out my day job. Brilliant. The dream. Except that when you're a property investor and you are um, buying properties, you're refurbishing them and of course they're empty, you're paying for everything and yet your tenants are not yet in, guess what? Ugh, cash flow. So a friend of mine said, what you need to do, Suze, is bring some extra cash in. Totally agree. You like working with investors because I just borrowed, I think I, on three houses I'd borrowed private finance by that point. So I started to get a feel for this stuff works. You're very good at sourcing deals. Why don't you put them together and run a sourcing business? And he said that to me in a car park, and his name was Peter. And we're, we're sitting in my car just chatting about life generally. Uh, so, all right, Peter, I will. So this deal is the first deal we did as a sourcing deal. This was a place called Grove Road. It was actually, it was very sad. It was um, a property investor who died halfway through, or three quarters way through doing a renovation. He actually died leaving two houses. And very sadly, his estate hadn't picked up on the final bits of the renovation, finished them off, got them sold or rented out. And so from having assets, his estate went into receivership. So I bought it directly from an estate agent, but it was in receivership, so it was a, a bankrupt stock. I thought it was a very sad situation. It was a house split into two flats. It had full planning permission. He just hadn't finished the final bits of building rigs. So sometimes when you're sourcing deals, what you're doing is you're solving problems that maybe somebody else felt that they couldn't be solved, which is actually quite easy. You just do a rectification notice, you pay a couple of hundred pounds extra from the building rigs people. We'll describe that later on in other videos for you, or um, have a look at some of my packs for you, renovation, workshops, that kind of stuff. They're all on my website. And then you solve the problem. So this was the beginnings of my sourcing business in order to grow and develop cash flow while I was building my own portfolio. So I ran a sourcing business for five years. We bought, it was two flats. It needed sort of just under 10 grand renovation. We bought it for 165, or we agreed the price for 165, and I sold it onto an investor. And it was worth 240, and that was a Rick's valuation done up. Not a bad deal, you think. The first investor I was working, because I was quite new to investors still, and I'd never really heard of what I now teach you guys is either a prima donna or a non-committal. My first investor was a lovely guy, shan't name him, never do. Um, he only needed to borrow 40 grand to buy this deal. Mind 165 worth 240? And he couldn't do it. So he couldn't say, no, I'm not gonna take this deal, but nor could he actually borrow the money. And so it came to within five days of getting the deal bought and the kind of dawning realisation, this guy is not going to buy this deal, came to me. So I gave him a deadline, he missed it, I gave him a deadline, he missed it, gave him a deadline, he missed it. So then I was really worried because uh, I didn't, hadn't developed a big pool of investors by that point, which is why I always tell you guys, 30% on your deals, 30% on your money, 40% working on your business. So 30% on getting deals, 30% on getting private finance and, and normal bank finance. So I sold it to an estate agent. I sold it to a guy that owns an estate agency company, basically selling ice to Eskimos, but because it was such a great deal, he could. What did we charge? 5% of purchase price. So we got 5% of um, a 165, which was just over 8,000 pounds. It was 8,150 quid. And you know what? Because I didn't have a day job and because most of my money was invested in property and it was cycling through, renovating, refinancing and all the rest, that 8,000 quid doof, kept me afloat to go again. So if you have cash flow issues or you're starting in property and you don't know where to start, deal sourcing can be a fantastic way to go. Now, on my website, I've published all of the documentation, the brochures, the leaflets, the sample legal documentation, the agreements that we used. 
So go have a look at the website because we've got all of that information for you. We've got packs about deal packaging, we've got workshops, the whole kit and caboodle. It's there for you. But 8,000 quid, eh? Kept me moving forward and I thought, you know what, let's go do this again. So if I could do it, you could do it. Good luck. Hope it goes well for you in property. Sourcing discounted deals it is the basis of all property wealth. I have written a pack for you guys. You can download it right now. 45 million quid's worth of property, agreed sourcing price for 30 million quid. All that information in that pack.